Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Anybody excited about Jesus tonight? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm happy to be in the house tonight. This is where my help comes from, my Amen. strength. It gives me the power to keep on going. Keep and it comes from going. the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready for the word tonight? Yeah. Amen. Let's get ready to jump right into it. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew, chapter 16. Verse 24, that's where the text is coming from tonight. Tonight's the night. Matthew 16 and 24. For those of you all that are here for the first time, uh, we've been in a new sermon series entitled Leadership. Uh, the goal and the objective is to uh, help you shift that gear so you can go from just being a good leader into being a great leader. Yes. We want uh, everyone that's here in Forward Christian Center to be their best. Uh, we believe that these messages will help you begin to shift over mm -hmm. into that next level that God has called for you to be at. Amen? Amen. Matthew 16, 24 reaches this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let mm -hmm. him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come, and in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Uh, then we're going to take a reading from Galatians. Chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians 2 and 20. And this reads, uh, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And we're going to title this leadership uh, series uh, particular part as shifting to lead like Christ. Amen. Shifting to lead like Christ. Amen. Uh, here in the book of Matthews, we clearly see where Jesus said, if you want to uh, be my disciple, you must follow me. You must deny yourself. Um, this is something that is uh, evident. This is something that is glaring that every leader uh, in Christendom have to do. It's not nothing that you know you could do or nothing you want to do. It's something that you have to do. In order for you to be an effective leader for Christ, you have to deny yourself. Yeah. You have to deny those things that you want to do. You have to deny those things that you like to do. Uh, and you even have to deny some of those places that you used to go to. Yeah. Um, you, some, some of you all had an appetite for a club living. Mm -hmm. You have to deny that. Some of you all had an appetite for women, drugs, and sex. Mm -hmm. You have to deny that. Some of you all had an appetite for just a candy bar. But can I say God wants you to deny that because blood and sin. Yeah. So, so we as believers literally have to begin to deny ourselves mm -hmm. uh, so, so we can begin to take up the cross, take up the man God wants us to carry for his glory. Mm -hmm. But many believers, they don't do that. They want to serve Christ their kind of way. Mm -hmm. But can I say you can't serve God your kind of way yes. and get his results? Yes. You can only get his results when you do things his kind of way. And it comes when you deny yourself. Amen. Uh, we're talking about leading like Christ. Uh, and if we know and understand what Christ has done for us, we mm -hmm. know that he laid some things down for our sake. Uh, he laid his own life down. He laid his will down. He laid down what he wanted to do. He said, not my will be done, but let your will be done, God. When he was there, sweat began to drop down his face like blood. He began to say, not what I want to do, God. Mm -hmm. But he was thinking about you when he was hanging there. He was thinking about the salvation for the world. He had his mind on Martin. He had his mind on Witty. He had his mind on Sylvia. He had his mind on us and said, guess what? 
I'm going to die for you. Mm. I'm going to deny what I want to do for the sake of my people because I have a plan and a purpose in action, and I want to see it come to pass. And that's what he did. And as leaders, if we want to shift that gear, anybody know how to drive a five-speed? And you get to shift in that gear. If you want to get to that next gear, you got to do some things. You got to take action. It's not about just sitting still. You can't just do like when you're driving in a, a, a standard shift car. You're just kind of coasting. You know, you get to a red light, you pick up your foot, put it on the brake, and then you put it back on the gas when it's time to go. But in that clutch, you got to start moving your foot and hitting that clutch, and then the thing start rolling back on you, and then you got to keep hitting it and hitting the brake and moving it. I don't even know how to drive one no more, I don't think. <laughs> but you have to take action. Just like if we want to lead like Christ, we got to do some stuff. I think we like the easy road. We like things handed to us. That's just the age that we're living in. Um, things are handed to us. There's no hard work involved. Uh, I know in my generation, we would have to walk to school and we'd have to walk to the corner store. Or we'd have to take the bus to go to the mall if we wanted to go or ride our bicycles to go and have some fun. But these days and times, everything is get in the car. Mom, take me here. Mom, take me there. There is no action involved. You want an allowance? I told my son, I allow you to live in my house. <laughs> I allow you to eat my food. Yeah. And I allow you to sit up and play that game all day and all night. That's your allowance. So all of these things, this new age, this new generation that we're in, they think something is old to them, but I want to encourage you guys to know that it's going to take some work if you want to shift. Say, neighbor, neighbor. It's, time to shift. it's time to shift. Amen. Amen. It's time to shift. So let's begin to open this up. We're going to take a more interactive approach uh, with this whole leadership uh, and just kind of walk this thing down uh, as the book of Matthew chapter 16 says that if you want to become a leader or be that leader, you have to deny yourselves. Anybody so, did some yeah, yeah. So let's talk about some denials. Uh, anybody had to deny some things uh, in their in their marriage lately? Anybody had to deny some things in their marriage? You felt some type of way you was about to say something, but instead of you uh, doing it, you held your peace. That's all the time. And let the Lord. <laughs> I said, my God is a good God. <laughs> no. Oh, really? Oh, really? All right. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. know that little man sit on your shoulder and say, say this or say that, but we have to deny ourselves. It's so easy to say, you know, or get smart out of the mouth when uh -huh. sometimes smart commentary is not necessary. Uh, sometimes we can just deny our flesh and not say anything. Just say, okay, to God be the glory and keep moving. So, we're talking about just being practical. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything major, but we're talking about have you had an experience? Uh, well, we'll kind of just open it up, not just in marriage, yeah, anytime yeah. this to, week. Yeah, yeah. I wanted, you wanted I wanted to, to get with the marriage. I want to start with, with the marriage first. Start with the couple. Okay, yeah, with the couple. We have yeah. microphones ready. Okay, Sister Christy. And if you could stand up uh, so we could put you on camera, zoom in on that later. Stand up. You're on candy camera. Um, just like Pastor A said, um, I think sometimes you have to deny your communication, whether it be uh, you speaking to each other mm -hmm. on a daily basis mm -hmm. and not just speaking to each other, but, um, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, cut down the extra communication, maybe the text in, the extra phone calls. You know, I've had to do that a lot of times, not just with myself, but with other people, so I can, you know, kind of get tunnel vision and mm -hmm. just listen to the voice of God and say, God, okay, what you gonna have me to do mm. so that I can be prosperous for the next day or the next couple of days? Um, and I and everybody know that I love little cutesy type stuff. Uh -huh. So um, I tell people, I say, yeah, you know, I'm trying to get away from always being on my cell phone, mm -hmm. whether it's texting or communicating that way, because I, I find myself being too distracted. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just something that I've realized that that's an issue for me. And when I don't have that distraction, I can get more things done a little bit better. Okay. Amen. Amen. Not so saying that don't communicate, but just extra communication, you know, kind of cut it down a little bit. 
Okay, so your denial is uh, getting rid of some of the active devices, electronics, text yeah. messaging, and outside communication, and yeah. you're saying you deny yourself of those things. Amen. Right. Okay, Amen. okay. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? On the marriage side. All right. We're right over here. <laughs> it's going to be real petty. But, uh, <laughs> you know how um, I learned from y'all that everybody knows where everybody goes. Yes, yes, yes. And I was coming home from work, and Robin was supposed to be at home. Mm -hmm. So I thought. So I didn't know where she was. She ain't leaving no note or anything. Uh -huh. So I kind of I got in my feelings. Okay. So she come in the house. I said, um, where you been at? <laughs> Straight up. You know. She said, I was out. I wasn't expecting you to be home. I said, you couldn't leave me a note because uh -huh. she was telling me her phone had died. Uh -huh. I said, so you couldn't write a note and just leave it and say, hey, we go on such and such. We'll be right back. He said, I told you my phone dead. I said, but you still could write me a note. Everybody knows where everybody goes. Yeah. Well, anyway, I jumped up and I just left the house, you know, without saying nothing. Mm. And I was going to get real pet. I was going to stop cooking. I was going to stop. <laughs> you going to starve him. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he was going all you the know, way in. We kiss each other every morning yes, before sir. I leave. I was going to cut that out. <laughs> I was going to stop calling her on my lunch break, yeah. you know, because, you know, Flesh, when you get in your feelings like that, that's all the enemy needs. Mm. Yeah. You know, because he's very petty like that. Uh -huh. yes. But some kind of way, when I came back in the house, God has just turned the thing around. Yeah. You know, so there was no more pettiness. Mm. You know, so Amen. we came back together like we needed yeah. to be. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So he that's denied good. the petty Amen. spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, and we have to <laughs> deny the petty spirit yes. because, uh, you know, uh, when, when we don't get things to go like we want them to go, the enemy will start feeding your mind with all kind of thoughts. He starts saying, I'm going I'm to stop cooking for you, and I'm going to stop uh, um, kissing you in the morning and getting out of the routine that, you know, they've started. And, and that's nothing more than the enemy. But he didn't let the devil keep a foothold in his marriage. He said, I'm going to deny my flesh, get outside of what I want to do, and do things God's way. And, and, and that is the makeup of a leader, a leader that have made up in his mind that I'm going to shift to this next level. Yeah. Because how many of y'all know that um, every test that you fail, you're going to have to continue to take it till you pass it. Absolutely. I'll say it like this. Whatever you don't repent from, you will repeat. Amen. And so many people go through the same cycle over and over and over. And they think that, um, you know, they, they start feeling like they want to give up. But if you don't do anything different, you're going to continue to get the same results out of your life. Yes. So we as believers, we have to begin to stand firm yes. and say, okay, I know how I'm feeling. I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get outside of what I want to do and outside of what I want to say yes. and do things like Christ want me to do. Amen. And that is a leadership. Amen. It's time to make the shift. Anybody ready to make the shift? Amen. I Anybody want to talk. coming out of pettiness. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know y'all can be we, petty. We, we, we got, we got, we got some, <laughs> some pettiness. I want to talk to some singles. Some singles. Uh, tell us about a, a, a situation where you had to deny some things. Any singles want to keep it real around here? I guess none of y'all haven't gotten any um, DMs. Direct message, because you know it goes down in the dim. None of y'all received any eggplant sent to you. Oh, oh, I see a hand up over here. Okay, come on. There she go. Amen. Good evening. I just had to get myself out of relationship because it wasn't good for me. Amen. So I had to do, like you said, I had to let go and uh -huh. let God. Amen. Amen. I couldn't put up with the foolishness. Amen. So she denied herself a relationship. And some people continue in various relationships, even though they know that they're not beneficial to their life. But she's saying she's denied herself because mm -hmm. many people, like I said, will keep people knowing they're no good for you Ooh. just to have companionship, just to have somebody in your life. Some people just can't be alone. They just, it's just in their makeup. They just have to have somebody, whether that somebody's worth anything, they don't care. They just have to have somebody in their life. So she denied her flesh and said, I'm going to let God be God, and I'm going to let this relationship go. Amen? Amen. 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 That's good stuff. Right. Right. Anybody else? Anybody else want to share? 
before we move All on. Right. It, what about our teens? Any teens in here that have to deny some things? None of our teens? They don't want to, okay, hide. well, we'll move on. They hide now. Well, let's talk about who Jesus is and mm -hmm. what he did. Jesus was, well, is the greatest leader. Uh, we are to lead like Christ, which he led through humility, and mm -hmm. yet he was still uh, powerful and had authority. Uh, Jesus was one of those persons who shook the world and is still shaking the yeah. world. We are telling his story right now. So history is his story. He's the one that's continuing to live out and be God in this earth today. So he was the example of uh, leadership. He took a gang of men and women who people would probably count as the lost, the least, and the left out. And he equipped these men and women to take the world. If he had not equipped them to take the world, or if he had not become the leader and shifted their mindset, then many of us would not be saved. The book of uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of those apostles and Timothy and Paul and all of those people would not have written the epistles because Jesus was the ultimate leader and he showed us how to lead with humility. Uh, he could have easily came and said, okay, all y'all just drop dead. You know, when they were coming to uh, take him to be hung, he could have just easily said, okay, God, bring down the angels, kill them all, you know, and let's move on with life. But he showed humility. But then he also operated in authority and with power. He spoke a word yes, he and did. healing began to meet yes, people did. and healing took place in people's bodies. He moved in authority where he all he did was begin to move and people knew he was there. They started crying out, J Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He had healing in his hands. He had authority to begin to cast out demons. He was the ultimate leader, and we have to aspire to live and lead like Christ Jesus. Amen. And one of the beautiful things about Jesus is that uh, he made everyone around him better. That's the mark of a leader. You can write that down. Leaders make other leaders. Yeah. Leaders create other leaders. Yeah. Leaders uh, make everybody that surround them better. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the signs of a great leader. The scripture says that uh, Jesus walked up to the disciples and said, okay, I see that you have a fishing business. Mm -hmm. You're fishing right now. But if you follow me, if you deny yourself, yeah. I'm not just going to make you a fisherman, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Yeah. In other words, Jesus was saying, if you follow me, I'm going to take you to this next level. Yeah. If you follow me, I'm going to take you to some places where mm -hmm. you can't go yourself. Mm -hmm. But the only way that you can get to that next level is you have to deny yourself and follow me. Yeah. So Jesus was the greatest leader. Uh, and, 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 and let's begin to talk about or define what a leader is. A leader is this. It is someone who is a person of influence. It is someone who can exercise a high degree of control or influence over others. In our case, for the betterment of others. So Jesus, he walked with that type of swag. Wherever he went, things began to change. He, wherever he went, people's lives was changed and impacted. They became better. Yeah. When he walked in a place where there were some, some people that was dying from sicknesses, they would touch him. And they became healed. Yeah. Those that came into contact with Jesus with their mind um, running them up. As a matter of fact, they call them a lunatic mind. Mm -hmm. Jesus was able to give that man a soundness, soundness of, mind. of mind. Jesus often walked on the scene when there was dead people. Mm -hmm. And he called Lazarus from death into life. Yeah. What was that? He was influencing them to become better. Yeah. He was changing their lives. He was impacting them so they can be their best. And God is saying the same thing to each and every one of us. We are leaders. We are impactful people. And when you want to be the best leader that you can be, it is when you begin to influence others so they can be their best in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to use our influence uh, for the betterment of the kingdom of God. Uh, we can't use our influence to bring people down. Many of us may be leaders, and we can lead in a good way, and mm -hmm. we can also lead in a bad way. Uh, there are people out here in the streets right now leading gangs, leading uh, drug cartels, leading different crime they're still leaders. And they're still leaders. Mm -hmm. Leadership goes both ways. But we're trying to get you to a place to where you can be that 
that carrier of the gospel, the leader that leads like Christ, that leader that is influential in somebody's life, that your life is so reflective of who Jesus Christ is that they start wanting to deny stuff from their life simply because you're around. If you're a great leader and people watch your life, they will look at you and if they do something bad, they'll say, oh, I don't need to do that because your influence is in their, in their mm. atmosphere. They'll start saying, oh, I'm not gonna curse today because you know, sister such and such is here. Or I won't go this place today because my friend over here and she's so saved. So all of these things, if we know how we influence people, if we know how we are leaders in our own capacity, even children are leaders in yes. their school, yes. we can influence people for the gospel, but we gotta do it God's way. We can't be one way one day and one way the next, because that's going to show a bad example of Christ's leadership. He was steady. He was sturdy. He was all the time the same way. He wasn't one way one day and one way the next. Mm -hmm. He was all God, but yet he was all man. But he was able to control his flesh and control his life and walk this life without sin. And God is saying, I can give you that same anointing, that same power, if you, de if you desire to have it. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't even want it. We're like, Lord, I don't want no influence. I don't want nobody following me. You know, uh -uh, don't do what I do. Because we don't want to be held accountable to anybody. But when you're out there winning souls, it causes you to be accountable. Mm -hmm. When you're giving yourself and denying yourself and going after people for the gospel of the Lord yes. Jesus Christ, then you then you're sacrificing and denying yourself for the gospel and the kingdom. So we got to step outside of our little box, our little uh, own little world, and begin to get in people's ear uh, with the gospel of Jesus. Amen. And I believe we have some leaders here. So let's begin to open it up right now. Um, and I want some of you all to share with some of the men and women that's in here that um, have made or have impacted your life or have influenced you to become better. Uh, if you don't mind standing up and you see someone in here, um, just, just begin to share who's impacted your life and caused you to begin to do some things better in here. I got a couple people. Um, there's some, some wonderful people in this church. Um, but I have to say someone that has really influenced my life is Sister Pam. Mm -hmm. um, she tells it like it is. She'll say which Pam? And, we got two. Sullivan Moore. Okay. okay. Pam Moore. Um, okay. And she'll, she'll, but she does it in love, not like, now you know you shouldn't have did that. She'll just say, well, what do you think? Mm. Uh, how do you think you handled that? Mm. And then I find myself in situations like earlier this week, I have an issue with people getting smart with me. Because I feel like I have that Medea anointing. If you got smart with me, you must want me to get smart back. <laughs> so I have to, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Amen. And I'll be saying to myself, now, Jessica, now you know you shouldn't have said that. Why did you say that? You didn't have to say that. But it felt good to say it at the moment. So y'all pray for me. Because I have an issue with that. That's my problem. Amen. Dealing with when people, I don't come at people, but when you come at me. Mm. I want to know how to deal with that. Amen. Let, I'm asking a question. Mm -hmm. How to deal with it? Yes. Deny the flesh. How you do that? Uh, in the moment. In, in the moment. In the uh, moment. You have, to, you have to think and do what Christ would do. Mm -hmm. Will Christ pop off at him or will Christ get back at him? Mm -hmm. uh, chances are no. Christ will try to, Christ had, was, was so crafty enough to where he can turn uh, the situation around yes. and create it and make it a teachable moment to where, you know, he'll kind of flip the script and cause them to be at all with what he said or done to them. So I think, you know, sometimes when people come at us the wrong way, we must um, turn evil into good. Mm -hmm. I, I think the scripture says it like this, a soft reply Turn turneth back, back wrath. wrath. So if they're coming at us one way, we need to Give them some sugar, give them some love, mm -hmm. and, and, and give it back to them God style. Amen. I'll pray for you. Give Amen. it back God Amen. style. You can do it. You can do it. Amen. You All got right. it. You got it. Yeah. A anybody else in here um, was influenced by another leader that's here? Okay. Any, okay. Uh, Minister. So, so, so. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, hey. I don't, I'm not influenced by 
because I don't really know anybody here, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to say something to what she said. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when people, like you say, get smart with you, I know in the Bible, when you come back and you be nice to people that, you know, say stuff to you mm -hmm. any kind of way, you make them feel bad, actually, because when you come back with a smart, you know, I meant statement after something they said mm -hmm. to you, it just kind of go back and forth, back and forth. Easy. And it's like you're in the mm -hmm. flesh, they're in the flesh. But when you're serving God, you deny yourself mm -hmm. and you and I know it's a Bible scripture that says something about um, <coughs> heaping coals on top of their heads. Mm. It's as, as if saying that you're being nice to them, even though they're being mean to you. And it's, it, it's going to make them feel so bad mm. till, you know, who wants coal dumped Amen. on top of their heads. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So that's Amen. what I want to say. Hot, yeah. Amen. She, she said hot coal. Hot coal. <laughs> I mean, I know it's, I don't yeah. know the exact scripture, Absolutely. but I know it's somewhere yeah. in there that says. So a lot of times it's just really easy. I mean, if you, and especially if you don't have a reason to go back at them, you, they may be dealing with something. And if you said that you didn't say anything to them, they could be dealing with something. You never know what mm -hmm. they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So when you go back, it just makes them feel probably worse, mm -hmm. you know, so. But um, on top of that is a lot of times the people that I deal with, they influence me because I know a lot of times we, you know, we see people around us that we're connected to mm -hmm. and we have to be a certain way to, to bring them into the, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to say and do things to push people further away from Jesus yes, when yes. you're saying, you know, I love the Lord, you know, you might give them a scriptures or something and then you go around and do something or say something crazy and they looking at you like, I thought she served the Lord, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so I try to stay influenced by the people. Well, not influenced, but I try to stay as an example for mm -hmm. the people around me to keep That's them, good. you know, and it keeps me mm -hmm. on my toes because mm -hmm. I know that they're looking at me. Amen. 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 That's somebody Amen. who has a heart to, Amen. um, have a leadership because you want people to be great around you. Uh, you want people to excel. You don't want people to see the bad side of who you are. So you try to always maintain a, a level of spirituality so people can see Christ Jesus. Uh, not that we don't have our bad days because, you know, there are some times when we may be in our feelings, but we have to make sure that we live above the flesh. Uh, when the flesh wants to rise up or we want to feel or act some type of way, we still have to remember that that we're examples of Christ and we got to deny ourselves. Amen. Um, I, I like to say the two of you influence me um, as, as leaders of the church and I have respect for you. Uh, you know, I don't always agree with you. <laughs> and um, because of that, you call me stubborn. But um, I, I, I appreciate what you try to instill into us, Amen. you know, Amen. And, and all of the, the ministries that we are involved in. Mm -hmm. Uh, just realizing the fact that it is a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and the influences that you have over all our lives yes. because we are we get that word coming down Amen. Amen. and it's going to hit us one way or the other whether mm -hmm. we like it or not or whether we receive it or not um, and that's just it with me you Amen. know just receiving Amen. that and being able to not understand it all the time mm -hmm. but know that you are trying to instill in us and get us to go to the next level. Amen. 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 That, that's that's good. good. That's good. Thank uh, you. It, it is our one over here. It is our job as pastors to uh, equip you. Um, I, I think uh, sometimes in, in um, the, uh, past years, pastors would try to literally control and steer people to do things their way. Mm -hmm. But we as pastors, our job is to actually give you the word mm -hmm. and let the word do the work. Yeah. You know, and uh, so and sometimes we might not see immediate results, but then we as pastors, we have to trust God and trust that his word is going to do what it says it's going to do mm -hmm. and, and work in and through your life to give you the results that you're looking for. Because not not only do we supposed to have your best interest at heart, we know that God, our father, yes, has your yes, best interest absolutely. at heart. Amen. Um, I would say I have two that I'd say that influences me a lot, mm -hmm. and that would be my praise team. Amen. Wow, yes. wow. <laughs> and, Shout out to the praise team. Yes, yes. We we do hold each other up, all of us, yes. and the Blackmans. 
Um, they're always there. Amen. <laughs> Counselor and Lady Blackman. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Come on, no, 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 no. Yeah. Give them a little bit more. Put some stuff on. Yeah. That woo, sound woo, right. Woo, woo. Yeah, they're always the same. Any, if I've ever needed them or encouragement or something like that, they said the right words at the right time. So I have to say thank you, the Black Men family. Amen. Amen. And I think it was one more over here, Minister Murray. Oh, excuse oh, we me. We got a young man okay. in the back. Uh, I like to say, man, man. Wow. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, go ahead and put, put some put some sugar on it. Put y'all y'all y'all. Yeah. He's clapping hard. Because yeah. <laughs> um he influences me to be a better football player and a student in um class. Cause he told me about how my grades had to be on point for Amen. me to play football. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. He influenced him. He Amen. So he can become better. All right. One more and then we'll move on. Mary in the front. I had, uh, two quick ones. Uh, the first one was already mentioned, which is Pastor Blackman. Um, it was prophesied to me that God was going to bring some real true friends into my life. Mm. And that's nothing more than what he has been to me and more like a big brother. Yeah. You know, and I love to hear him pray. You know, and, and just, yeah. you know, he, 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 looks so, he looks so serious all the time, but I've gotten to know him on a personal level, and he can crack you up if you just sit and you just listen and talk to him. And the mother one is Sandra Durham. Y'all heard yeah, her. She give it to you straight, yeah. but she is so full of love. Amen. Straight, you know? no chase. Yeah, and, and yeah. she would go above and beyond. If, if she could do it for you, she's going to make sure it happens for you. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Amen. Fred? 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 Okay. Yeah, I, I had one uh, being new to uh, leadership in the ministry. Um, I just wanted to highlight Sister Cynthia and Sister Teresa have been uh, very important for me. Amen. Come on, let's give it up. Give it up. Uh, so those questions, obviously they, they both know you a bit better, and sometimes you need that that sort of lateral leadership to help mm. you grow. So just to be able to say, okay, I've done this, and you have that question of how to lead past it, both of their inputs into my leadership have been tremendous. So I just wanted to say that for them. To Amen. That's awesome. I love it. I love woo, it. Woo, woo, woo. That's called layers of leadership. I love Amen. it. So let's begin to talk about some of the attributes that's required to lead successfully and effectively. Mm -hmm. In order to uh, lead effectively, and lead with success, you have to be a faithful leader. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness shows we can be trusted to lead. You have to have faithfulness. Uh, what is faithfulness? A person that's consistent. Yeah. A person that does not um, get caught up in their feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they do get caught up in their feelings, they're able to snap back Rebound. and get back on mm -hmm. track. Yeah. Uh, a faithful person is a person that's consistent. They're methodic. They're stoic to where, you know, they, it, it, they're the same literally all the time. Mm -hmm. Not much moves them. They're, they don't have many highs or lows. They're even kill and they're steady. Mm -hmm. And that's the mark of a great leader is, is a person that's faithful, uh, consistent. Um, these type of people are necessary in the body of Christ yes. because Christianity is filled with a whole lot of immature people. Mm -hmm. People that's emotional, people that's hot one day and they're cold the next, mm -hmm. people that's trying to live for God one minute and then they're, they're running, the, running with the devil the next minute. Mm -hmm. so, so in order for those that are unstable to grow, mm -hmm. they have to have faithful leaders that's a part of their life. Yes. The scripture says it like this, it is a faithful man that will oh, abound God. in the blessing. So as you operate in faithfulness, God will literally bless your life. Mm -hmm. And that's literally the mark of a great leader. Yes. Um, one of the great things that, uh, that I saw in common amongst uh, the ones that were uh, addressed here in Fort Christian Center, 
They're faithful people. Yes. They're consistent people. You can depend on them. Mm -hmm. You can count on them. When the, the doors of Forward Christian Center open, they're there. Yes. When the doors of Forward Christian Center close, they're right there. They, they live godly lives. Yes. You know, they're not hiding in the booth in the back in the corner of the dark. No, they're the same way when you see them in the, in the daytime mm. as, as they are in the nighttime. Amen. They're consistent. They're faithful. And, and, and literally, that is the mark of a great leader. Amen. I think uh, faithfulness is important. Uh, if you have an issue in the area of faithfulness, even in any area of life, mm -hmm. that's something that you need to start working towards. Uh, if we want to excel in the things of God, we have to make sure that faithfulness is a part of our life. We have to be consistent. We have to be consistent, especially in the things of God. We have to be able to be counted on. Uh, I say be faithful to the house of God. When there, If this is your appointed place, we should be here during our appointed time. Yes. Uh, if you're on vacation, or you're ill or something like that, that's fine. But I'm saying some people just don't want to come. You know, I, well, I'm not going today. I just don't feel like it. That has nothing to do with anything. Can't anything. Be a, can't be a leader you like that. You can't lead uh, if you're led by your emotions or your feelings. A person that operates in faithfulness knows and understands that anytime they come into this door, somebody may be looking for you or watching your life. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we're not just living for ourselves, but someone may need that smile that you have. Someone may be looking for that yes, hug. Yes. Somebody may be looking for you to just say hello. It makes their day. But if you're not consistent uh, with doing the things of God and being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there, then that shows that you're not ready to shift to the next level of leadership. We have to be ready to move when God say move. But if yes. we're not faithful, he can't move us. He has to keep us where we are until we develop in the area of faithfulness. Uh, if it's faithfulness in your prayer life let's work on that if it's faithfulness uh in your uh winning souls mm -hmm. work on that if it's faithfulness in reading your word work on that if it's faithfulness and being able to uh praise and worship in the house of god work on that we have to start making our list of areas that we want to mature in in faithfulness and let's start knocking those things down let's not go all of our days and not master faithfulness mm -hmm. in various areas of our life amen and um I, I saw a statement made by uh, Minister Robbins uh, before I came to service uh, today, and I, I think uh, she said that uh, faithfulness literally trumps talent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she did something like hashtag, um, I'll choose faithfulness over talent. And, and when I looked at that, uh, that, that statement, um, I, I, I said, yeah, I will in fact take faithfulness over talent. Yeah. I will take faithfulness over giftings yes. because there are so, so many gifted people in the body of Christ, yes. but their giftedness is not packaged with faithfulness. Can't count on they'll, they'll show up one day. They'll show up for a season. They'll preach the paint off the walls. They'll mm -hmm. sing people's hearts out. But then the next season, they're nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. You'll find them stuck up in a scandal. Or, uh, now they're saying, oh, I'm not saved no more. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Or, you know, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. You know, and they're tossed all kind of places. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they're gifted people. God can use them, mm -hmm. but, but he can't really use them like he wants them to be used because they're not consistent. They're not faithful. Mm -hmm. so, so in order to be a leader, you got to practice faithfulness. We have to be able to count on you. We have to be able to depend on you. Mm -hmm. We can't be wondering, oh, is he going to be here in service one, yeah. uh, today? Or is she going to make it to service? Or, or um, well, well I, I heard that they're not feeling well. Um, are they still going to try to press their way through? Faithful people, they continue to do what they have to do because they see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. They see the bigger picture. We as pastors, although sometimes we don't feel good, we still come here anyway. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're trying to be faithful to the people of God. Yes. We're trying to be faithful to the house of God. Yes. We want God to, 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 to maximize us so we can be better for others. But yes. in order to do that, we have to be faithful people. Let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 2. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2. It's on the screen if you need that. It says, you should think of us as servants of Christ. And mm -hmm. we're talking about you guys. The one God has trusted to do the work of making known his secret truths. 
Those who are trusted with such an important work must show that they are worthy of that. So we have to show ourselves worthy to be trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to show ourselves worthy to be able to carry uh, the gospel in our mouths. Uh, we have to show ourselves faithful to God so that he can use us. Uh, he doesn't want to use anything that's not faithful. Uh, if he know he can't trust you uh, with the level of uh, things that he wants to lay in our life. One of the things that Pastor Charles began to share on uh, Sunday, God is not going to invest in a broken machine. Uh, if you're broken or out of order, why would he put something in something that's not worth working? Uh, if you haven't developed faithfulness, you need to start working on faithfulness so you can get to your next level. Uh, if there is something or a challenge that you've been coming up against in the area of faithfulness, I want you to take a mental uh, note right now and start thinking about what is that area that I need to produce faithfulness in? Because some of us may be faithful in all kinds of areas but then there's that one little thing mm. and God is saying I'm trying to develop that I want you to be consistent in that. I want you to be consistent in how you approach me through prayer. I want you to be consistent in not letting your emotions overwhelm you. I want you to be consistent in faith because the just got to live by our faith. Amen. We can't please God without faith. He wants us to be consistent in trusting in him. So we have to make sure that we're walking in faithfulness. We Amen. have a question in the back. Okay, my it's, it's a question. Um, when you are trying to identify where you're, where you lack your faithfulness, mm -hmm. um, for me, I would like to know how do you pinpoint mm -hmm. where your faithfulness is lacking? Uh, I would say those areas where you always come up short, where you can't be dependent on. Uh, those areas where you know because we have certain things that we know we can't be trusted mm -hmm. with. Uh, mm -hmm. Those areas that we know that we got to come up higher because we're not faithful in that area. We know uh, that we, um, let me see, an area. Maybe you're saying, maybe it's uh, your consistency on coming to Bible study. If you know you're not faithful with being in attendance, even when you have the opportunity. I'm talking about having an opportunity to be here. Some people have to work. But some people are just home. You know, if that's an area or a struggle for you, then you say, okay, I know I'm not consistent like I need to be. I need to show myself faithful in that area. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a, a conscious effort every Tuesday night when I'm available to make sure that I'm sitting at the feet of where God appointed me so that I can get the word. Uh, if it's uh, inconsistency in uh, your prayer life, uh, if you never say anything to God throughout your whole entire day, then those are some areas that you have to start working faithfulness in so you just open up your mouth and communicate with God. Amen. Amen. Does that answer the question? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right. Number two, leaders equip. They leave nobody behind. Amen. Um, this is uh, one of the things that come to mind is uh, as leaders, uh, we should make sure that <clears throat> those that are not up to the level that's around us, uh, we're doing what we can do to bring them up to our level. Yes. Um, when we see people sinning and when we see people doing things contrary to uh, the lifestyle of Christ, instead of us just being passive Christians and letting them continue in their sin, we have to begin to uh, take a stand and, yes. and share with them some of the things that they should do so they can start living a God-style life. But so often, you know, many people, they see other people suffering around them and they'll keep their mouth closed because they don't want um, that person to get upset with them. But can I say, uh, as a leader, your job is to, to, to correct those that, that are doing things wrong. Your, uh, your job is to, to bring them up to your level. And the only way they, they can do that is to actually receive some form of correction. Philippians 2.4 says this, don't be interested only in your own life but care about the lives of others too. We have to bring people up to our level. I think uh, Michelle Obama said, said it like this. Um, uh, we, we don't go down to people's level. We go, we, we go above, um, you know, their drama. We go above, you know, yeah, when they go low, thank you, baby. When they go low, we go high. So as leaders, you know, we're supposed to always, you know, do what's best. We're supposed to um, be our best so others can begin to follow suit behind us. Amen. Anybody had any uh, persons in their life uh, that you know uh, is doing something contrary to the word of God, but you just haven't said anything? 
Raise your hand. If you know you got somebody they in your life doing anything. something, contrary. And you just haven't said anything. How yeah. about this? You're in a conversation with somebody, and they're saying something negative, or they're saying something against somebody, and you just don't say anything. It happens all the time. You know, sometimes you just say, oh, if it, well. it, Okay, but you said it happened all the time. Yeah. Well, why everybody don't have their hand up? Um, I'm learning how to not um, choose every battle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know there is an issue in an area and versus address it, I just say, okay. I put a word on it and just say, okay, God, you know what the situation is. I'm going to let you fix it and not me. I'll step aside. But I think that happens all the time because uh, just like I'm not sure the sister but she said, um, Sylvia, with the green shirt. Yes. Sister Sylvia. Yeah. She said, um, she said, you don't have to attack everything yeah. or she, she was really trying to say your kindness can win a person. Mm -hmm. Um, like the Bible say with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? Mm -hmm. That's something that I have to always consistently work on because I am a natural person that wants to deliver um, an aggressive approach, but I have to rear back and say, okay, let me just change that because mm -hmm. I get better results when I don't become aggressive. Mm -hmm. Well, that action is, that's doing something when okay. you're still show, when you're sharing peace and love. I'm saying if you're in a conversation with someone and they're saying something negative about someone else and you just say, <laughs> he's so crazy. Well, that's as if you're agreeing. Yeah. Uh, the a positive approach would be that's not nice. You shouldn't say that. Well, you know, and kind of let them know right then and there that's not nice to say. Well, I I try and I do correct. Um, I have to be in a mode of correction because I'm trying to lead a team and mm -hmm. I'm trying to lead other people. So I do have to correct. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes your way of correcting it, not saying that you don't you don't have to be. Um, you don't have you can call the situation out mm -hmm. but it's how you say it i think it's maybe tone maybe that's my approach of saying it yeah. sometimes the tone can be uh, uh aggressive yes you can say the same thing but you can have a different tone so mm -hmm. that's what i mean by the the aggression yes you know that's what i mean i don't okay. necessarily mean that you're agreeing with what they're saying negative it's just the the tone in which you're trying to display the conversation or mm -hmm. say something back you just so kind you're of saying sort of it out um, your tone. without the aggression and that's a good point to yeah. make i mean we can't uh, start blasting people saying you going to hell you a heathen all y'all heathens up in here you know that's not going to draw them to christ he said with love and kindness have i drawn them so Amen. i'm saying not being confrontational with the person you still can't be in agreement if you're laughing about it that means you're in agreement if you're saying girl you're crazy you're in agreement with it if somebody is saying something negative or something that's bad and you just say <laughs> then you're in agreement with it. So we're saying if you're in a situation, and I, I just made that as an example because it happens all the time. If you don't say, now that's not right. If you don't make it, some kind of common commentary to say, mm -mm, that ain't Jesus, then that shows that you're, you're co-signing co co on their with, action. With their actions. Okay. Mother Betty. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not afraid to open my mouth. But I just like to thank God for the two of you. Amen. Amen. My whole life has changed. Amen. Amen. And I'm living the best girl. life, and it keeps yes. getting better and better. So Amen. it's been a true example, especially Amen. with my marriage now. Amen. 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 All right. There's some honey in the room. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. Amen. And we're talking about uh, leading like Christ. Uh, if your goal mm -hmm. is to shine or take the spotlight, you need a leadership. Uh, if you're always wanting to be out front, if you're wanting to be, I'm the spokesperson, or I want to have the, always have the upper the upper hand, or I always want to be in the front, then you need a leadership, because Christ doesn't lead that way. He allows others around him to be great. Uh, if you are in a place of leadership and you're always the person uh, that has to have a spotlight, then you need to check on the inside and see what's going on with you. Because if Christ is on the inside of you, something in you wants everybody to be great. Because when we all win, we winning. 
Yeah, if yeah. you're great, I'm great. Just like Pastor Charles said last Tuesday, if you eating, I'm eating. If I got it, you got it. Uh, if somebody in here went and get that Powerball, praise the Lord. I know y'all going to break me off some. Amen. So uh, if we you don't, I'm going to be at your door every day. <laughs> so we got to know we can't yeah. have this, this complex. Yeah. And I think it's common in the body of Christ because we look at someone else's gifts and we covet their gifts and we don't appreciate what God is doing in us. We can't look at another person's gift and say, oh, I wish I had that or I wish I could do that. We have to be appreciative of the gifts that God has given to us because can't anybody beat you being you but you. Mm. So you be the best yeah, you that you yeah, can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't sing like anybody else. I try to sing like me. I'm just going to be low down in the key. That's okay. I can't sing up high. That's all right. So we have to be satisfied with who we are. Amen. When you get that competitive spirit in the body of Christ, it brings things down. Yeah. But as leaders, we have to allow others to shine. Yeah, um, and actually we had that conversation today because uh, we were uh, listening to uh, Kyrie Irving. Um, he's one of the basketball players that used to play with LeBron James over in Cleveland. Um, but he ended up requesting a trade from Cleveland over to the Boston Celtics. And uh, one of his statements was that uh, he really did not want to be in the shadow of LeBron James anymore. He wanted to, you know, in, in sense, take his own team to the championship. And I started looking at that, and I said, wow. Um, that's how it is sometimes in the body of Christ where, you know, you have a winning team. You've gone to the championship. You, you have won it all, but yet uh, you're not satisfied with what God is doing for the team. You want to break off and start your own team or try to get to that place that you once had trying to do it all by yourself. And I looked at this and I said, wow, Kyrie Irving is some type of dude. I, 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 I see what you're, you're, you're saying and, and the action that you're taking. But to me, it symbolizes that it's all about you, yourself, and I. Because when you start looking at the big picture, you can be better together. Yeah. You can be greater, you yeah. know, with yeah. everybody working in harmony, yeah. knowing the role that they're playing yeah. outside of confusion and outside of, you know, all kind of distract, uh, disruptions and distractions. But, but, but we as believers, I believe we can learn from their situation because it just symbolizes that if we come together and be a unified body, we can accomplish some great things on the new north side of Jacksonville. We're better together. Hey man, we're better together. It's not no, uh, what, what do you say? It's not no, no, no I big and team, no oh, I and team. I and team. Yeah, yeah I was going to say no if there's I no big I and little you. Yeah, yeah. We're all in this together. And when we grow together, then we all shine. Uh, when my brother or sister in Christ is doing good, I'm happy about mm -hmm. that. I'm glad that you're well. I'm glad that you're prospering. Some people just don't want to see you doing good. As long as you're not doing better than them, they okay. You know, as soon as they get, you get more than them, then they got a problem. But we have to make sure as leaders that we're congratulating people. Yes. We're celebrating the accomplishments of people. We're being the best cheerleaders in the body of Christ. When someone gives a word or someone has a, a message or someone is shining in the things of God and they're in their season of spring where things are blossoming for them, we should be celebrating them. Mm -hmm. We should be all around saying, hey, let's do yeah. this. You know, because if you're a leader, we should all be looking for someone that can now shift us from another level we should be going from level to level whatever uh, situation or position you carry or whatever things that you do you should always look and be looking for someone who you can raise up to your level so then you can go on up to another level and then somebody else can go up to another Amen. level but if all of us are trying to hoard one space then nobody can grow but we have to start spreading ourselves out spreading out the love spreading out the joy if the team is doing great we Amen. all doing great we all and that's win. how god sees Amen. it man we all win we win and thirdly we'll close with this to lead like christ we must shift into teaching we have to shift into teaching we have to teach others titus 2 1 through 8 says this you however must tell everyone how to live in a way that agrees with true teaching teach the older men to have self-control to be serious to be wise, they must be strong in faith, in love, and in patience. Also, teach the older women to live the way those who serve the Lord should live. They should not go around saying 
bad things about others and be in the habit of drinking too much. They should teach what is good. By doing this, they will teach the younger women to love their husbands and children. They will teach them to be wise and pure, to take care of their homes, to be kind, and to be willing to serve their husbands. Then no one will be able to criticize the teaching God gave us. In the same way, tell the young men to be wise. You should be an example for them in every way by the good things you do. When you teach, be honest and serious. And your teaching should be clearly right so that you cannot be criticized. Then anyone who is against you will be ashamed. There will not be anything bad that they can say about us. Amen. In other words, uh, this is literally saying that as a leader, if we teach when it, you grow up, yeah. you'll become a teacher. Yeah. Those that are old, those that are mature, those that are seasoned in the things of God. It is your job. It yeah. is your duty yeah. to pour what you know, yes. to pour your experience, yes. to pour your life into someone that's younger yes. so they can be better equipped, so mm -hmm. they can be better prepared and grow in the things of God. Yeah. So we just want to encourage you to shift to that next level. Mm -hmm. Don't be just standing by seeing people die or fall by the wayside. Be mm -hmm. one of the men and women to say, hey, I, I, I see something great in you. I yes. see something powerful in you. Yes. Let me teach you something so you can be your best. Yes. Why? Because when you become your best, mm. it's going to cause me to become better in my life. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the word. We're shifting. We're going to shift some teachers in here. I, I just like this particular passage because it shows the various levels of mm -hmm. teaching. It excludes no one. It tells you how you can start teaching from level to level. No matter where you are, you can be an example. You can teach someone how to live a righteous life. If you used to smoke and you find somebody that's a smoker, teach them your or tell them your testimony. Amen. It's as simple as that. It's teaching someone outside of your own circle. Start reaching out to people. Start being an influence Influencer. A leader is someone with influence. Influence people to live right. If you know somebody who's not living according to the word of God, extend that love. Be Jesus for them. Let them see the love of Christ. Some people will never step foot in the church. And we should not always, when we're witnessing, say, I want you to come to my church. Mm. Because guess what? Everybody's not going to come to your church. Give them the word right then and there. Share the love of Christ right, right where you are. Tell them about Jesus, how Jesus loves them, how they can be saved and set free, delivered. Tell them your testimony and share with them right then and there because you don't know when they'll be able to have an opportunity to even come to a church. There are some people that I have witnessed to on my jobs before. They have never gone to church with me, but I've seen them years later. And they would say, you remember? You used to come to the job, and you would talk about the Lord. I'm saved now. I'm saved, and I'm just so grateful for what you said to me and all those years later. So we can be influencers by the way we live. Don't just be influencers in the house of God because the people around here are saved already. Amen. I'm talking about being an influence yeah. in the streets, being an influence in your home, being an influence in your neighborhood, oh, being an influence in your family that you know is just running all kind of mess. Make sure you're living a life for Christ each and every day so that you can make that leadership. Amen. 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 Let's get on our feet and we're going to close Let's out. Let's stand up and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up our hands and we'll close in the prayer. Father God, we come before you right now just thanking you for being our God. Hallelujah. And we are your people. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you open up the hearts and minds of your people to let them know that they are great in your sight. Father God, I pray that you stir them up on the inside. I pray, Lord God, that you continue to shake them up, Lord God, till you begin to make us just like you want us to be, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you call us forward right now in our life, Lord God. 
I speak to every person that's stagnant right now. Hallelujah. I call you forth yeah. to do the things of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I speak blessings over your life. Hallelujah. I speak, hallelujah, the lifestyle over your yeah. life that Christ God. wants you to live. Hallelujah. So you can be that effective hallelujah. leader that he wants you to be. Yes, God. Father God, I pray that you give us the mind that you had, Lord God, a mind to see yes. others the way that you want, that want us to see them, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you give us the power and the authority and the ability to call them forward, to call them up so they can be their best right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to that person that may feel like they're inadequate to do the things of God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you give them the holy boldness, Lord God, to go to that next level in you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that they'll begin to step outside of their situation, step outside of how they see themselves and see themselves like you see them, Lord God. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord God, for those that are in marriages right now. Hallelujah. That may even be on the rocks, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you call them forward yes. to be leaders in yes. the marriage arena right now. Yes, Lord God, I speak, Lord God, that their marriage shall be stable right now. I speak that they shall be faithful and operate in the things of God. I pray, Lord God, that they shall be consistent, Lord God in the love that they have one to another yes, and for their family Hallelujah. and for their ministry right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I also speak, Lord God, to the singles. Hallelujah. That faithfulness abounds on the inside yes, of them. God. Lord God, you said in your word that you're their husband man. Yes, and because you're their husband man, Lord God, you're going to take care of them. You're yes. going to keep them, Lord God. You're going to allow them to be consistent and steady just as you are yes. hallelujah father god continue to have your way in the life of our children right, right now uh, i pray lord god that our children shall be leaders yes. hallelujah in society i pray yes. our children shall be leaders yes. in the school system god. right now lord god hallelujah. they shall not be influenced by others uh, but they shall influence others yes. to live like christ yes, to god. to operate like christ yes, to god. be like christ lord yes. god I pray, Lord God, that they shall be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation unto them. And Father God, I pray for us collectively as a church. Lord, let us influence others beyond these walls. Lord, let us influence others on, on our jobs, Lord God. In our places of employment, Lord God. In our businesses right now, Lord God. Allow us to have greater impact outside this church yes. than we do in these four walls yes, Lord God. God I thank you Lord God Hallelujah. for causing us to be those leaders yes, that God. you have called us to be yes, and I pray all these things right now Hallelujah. in Jesus marvelous yes. name amen yes. and amen let's give God some Hallelujah. praise come on give God a praise if you're ready to make the shift yes. shifting into faithfulness shifting into the things of God being in